God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to fellowship here at the uh, Present Truth Biblical Research Ministry. I am the Reverend Pete Silva. Um, thank you for joining us, um, the people on the line and you guys here at present. Um, what I'd like to do, we have a, another teacher today that's going to share with us. So, um, you know, it's a wonderful thing that we get people, you know, that are sharing. Um, besides me, so it's a wonderful thing to be able to give the word to God's people. And one of the things that I've shared with you is that God gave you the word or gives us the word. He made us his children. And the God, the, the God that I know and the word of God that I understand has made us all ministers. We are responsible to take the word of God over the world. We are responsible to share God's Word with others. The Bible teaches us that that which we receive, we give back to the body of believers. By giving back is very, very simple. Um, we're not supposed to just keep it to ourselves and not tell anybody the good news. So that that you're learning is for you to give to others and make it available to other people. If you turn around and you keep it to yourself, then what's going to happen is very, very simple. Okay. Um, God is going to stop giving you more revelation, more information, more understanding. Why? Because remember the glass? The glass is full. When God gives you enough of everything, He fills it up. Now you have all this information and you have no more room in the glass for more water, let's say, or more word. So God is not going to give you more because it's just going to spill over. It's going to get wasted. So until that glass goes down some, somewhat, you're not going to be able to fill that glass up anymore or, or you know, add more to it to fill it up. Same thing with the Word of God, people. You need to understand this because it is the Word of God that we are interested in. It is God's way, the things that we want God to make available to, to us. Uh, today's teacher is the uh, Secretary Treasurer of our ministry, um, Minerva Lee Silva, also known as Nikki. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open with prayer. We're going to have a sing song, and then we're going to get right into the teaching. So join me in prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love, your mercy. Thank you for all the people online, Father, for those that are not here yet, the people present and those that are not here yet, Father, that you make a way where there is no way, according to the world. But according to you, Father, you work miracles, signs, and wonders. So thank you for making those wonders in our lives, those miracles, and making the path clear so that they can get to this fellowship. Thank you again for the people on the lines, and thank you for their lives, their strength, their health, and thank you for all those people who want to know you, Father, for who you really are. Thank you for allowing us the privilege to come to your word and know that all things are available to all those who believe. Thank you for this. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Take your sing, uh, singing in the present truth songbooks and go to number two. We're going to be singing, keep looking at the Lord, number two. Here we go. When I look inside myself, I find the keys of life. All I find is emptiness, misery, and strife. Then I start remembering the peace of yesterday. I put my eyes right back on God and everything's okay. Keep looking at the Lord. He'll carry you through. He'll take your gray skies and turn them to blue. Keep looking at the Lord. You'll see in the light. He'll take your darkness and give you light. When I look at men around me, my head starts to spin. Why do all those God rejectors always seem to win? Then I look beyond the senses and I understand. I am always with my God, He holds me in His hands. Keep looking at the Lord, He'll carry you through. You take your gray skies and turn them to blue. Keep looking at the Lord. You sing in the night. You take your darkness and give you light. When I look to God up 
above, I find just what I need. Strength to walk the way before me, light to guide my feet. I have courage not to stand, I know just where to go. Father heals my trouble, mind I'm on the glory road. Keep looking at the Lord, He'll carry you through. He'll take your gray skies and turn them to blue. Keep looking at the Lord, you'll see in the night. He'll take your darkness and give you light. Perfect. Oh, at least, very good. <laughs> um, so I think we're not going to get into anything else today. One, uh, yes, yes, yes. There is something I want to share with everybody, including the <coughs> guys online. Um, you know, giving is um, a form of love. Giving is something that God made available because as we give, we receive from God. Um, the, the ministry is called The Present Truth. Our address at headquarters is 2505 Aqueduct Avenue. You put Suite 1B for boy, Bronx, New York, 10468. The reason why I'm doing this is because being that the Word of God says that giving is receiving, and it talks about in Malachi 3.10 about our tithe, it is important for me to also make that available to you, especially those people online. Um, the, more, the more you give, the more you receive from God. In other words, the, the money that you, have, that you get, you, you can use that money, and that money can be even greater. When you give God what you owe Him, the Bible says in, in, in uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Bring all the tithes into my storehouse, that there might be meat in my house. Um, in other words, a ministry that's not tithing, minimum tithing, 10%, um, is a dying church or a dying ministry. And just to let you know, not only does the, the ministry die when that happens, the people, the people cheat themselves. They're hurting themselves, okay, by not giving God what you owe God. Malachi says that this is our requirement of mankind. The, the, the children of God. For us to give 10% so that we can continuously financially grow. Okay? And the 90% that we have left will become 110, 120% when we live life. Because we believe God. We do it God's way. We end up turning around and saying, this is what I'm going to do because I believe the Word. Okay? Um, it, it will also help your health. Okay, because you're not cheating God, you're, you're not you're not stealing from God. Those of us who don't tithe, be, for whatever the reason may be, whatever your attitude might be towards that, you are stealing from God. And what will happen is very simple: you, at the end of the day, meaning at the end of your life, you're going to have to give an account for what you're doing. And most of us understand this. Unfortunately, we just don't believe it enough. My job as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, is to make sure that I bring the news to the people, okay? Let the people know so that if they decide that they don't want to do this or they decide they don't, they don't believe it or they don't care to do it, it's on them, not on me, because I keep doing my job for God. And that's to inform you of what the Word of God says and what God says in His Word. So it is imperative, it is important for you to understand this and believe this. And believe the Word of God. You want an increase in what you're doing in your life, in your jobs, in, in, your, in your health? Put God to the test, He says. Prove me now if I will not open you the windows of heaven. That's what God said. Prove me now if I will not open you the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing that you're not going to have room enough man to hold. Okay, so think about what the Word of God is telling you. And then, since you, you're coming to hear the Word, you're coming, I'm assuming, because you want to get closer to God, you want to live a more abundant life, you want to turn around and live a healthier life, that's why you want to know about Him that, that makes everything available. Okay? So, if this is the case, then do what the Word of God says. Put yourself in a position where to trust God and do it God's way. You can... If you online, if you send, if you want to do your tithing with us, 
I gave you my address just now, and I told you the name of the ministry. You can make your checks uh, out to the Present Truth Ministry, or Present Truth Ministry, whichever the case may be. Um, you can see if, if you don't remember, and you and you trust me enough, which you shouldn't, because I'm a man just like any other man. But the Word tells me to tell you this. Some people don't forget, don't remember. If you put it in my name, I can still make that deposit into God's bank. Okay, and we have an account where that's what we're doing. Okay, we're putting the money there so that we can have uh, the ministry start to grow financially so that we can do other things. We can do functions. We can do uh, more things. We can have more books. We can have um, printed materials. You know, everything costs money. And we make these things available to people and people don't realize that it's gotta, somebody's got to pay for it. And when we all get together and we do the right thing, God opens the doors or the windows of heaven and He pours out those blessings to us as He promises us. Okay, so without further delay, what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring our teacher up today to share the word with us. Um, put your hands together and let's welcome our secretary treasurer, Minerva Lee Silva, known as Nikki. Welcome everyone, and uh, I want you guys to enjoy this teaching because we all need to hear it from time to time. Uh, I would like to thank my father for giving me the opportunity to share with you guys. And my teaching today, this afternoon, is going to be um, on forgiveness. Excuse me, I'm, I'm nervous, so I'm shaking a little. So, forgiveness is, it says in the word, is to lift up or away. To truly forgive, you need to, you need to not dwell on a situation. You need to move forward and, and leave all the negative things behind you. And as God's children, we need to learn how to forgive wholeheartedly and not just say the words. You know, a lot of people could, could say... I'm sorry and I really mean it. And that's not what we have, you know, what we aim to do as God's children. We have to, you know, actually say sorry and move on from the situation. And I know it's hard, but, you know, with, with time and, you know, work, everyone can do it. So, it says, um, because Jesus Christ fulfilled the law, God forgives us for our sins when we truly ask for forgiveness. Everyone sins. There's no doubt about that. Every day. It's, you know, it's not, uh, it could be little or big. It's still a sin, no matter what. So, you know, but our job is to sin less. You know, once we see, we know that something is wrong, obviously we're not supposed to do it. So we shouldn't. It shouldn't be, you know, something that we say, oh, I know it's wrong, but, you know, it shouldn't, it should be ended just like that. I know it's wrong, and I'm not going to do it. Um, we need to understand and see what decisions we make in our life and make sure that they don't have they don't conflict conflict with what it says in the word you know how to live in the word how what the word says to do um, in the word God tells us about forgiveness and you can see uh, clearly how to live your life according to the ways of the word when you forgive you can live a better and more comfortable life because you are not thinking about the negative things that the adversary puts in our past. Um, excuse me, sorry. He is, the adversary is always out to get us because we're God's kids and it is our job not to allow him, uh, not to allow the negative thoughts to get into our head. We can't allow ourselves to be defeated by the adversary. We need to rebuke the negative things and realize who is putting them there to begin with, and that's the adversary. When you don't, you see, when you don't forgive, that's holding a grudge. And, you know, grudges can hold you back from becoming the person that, you know, you're supposed to be in life. Um, how can you truly love the way that God says in the Bible to do? You know, love thy neighbor as you love thyself. How can you do that if you're holding a grudge? 
you know, you, you, you're letting something stop that, that bad feeling in your heart. You need to let it go. Um, would you want, would you want God to feel the same way about you because you sin? I don't think so. Would you like, would you not want him to let you into his kingdom because of things that you did in this life? Think about it. You wouldn't. You would want, you know, you would want to be forgiven for your mistakes. As long as you truly, you know, understand that it's a mistake and you need to not do it again. You know, let's see what it says in the word about um, forgiveness. The first uh, verse, the first chapter we could go to is um, Psalms 85, verse 2. Okay. In Psalms 85, verse 2, it reads, Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. Salah. Okay. So God has forgiven the people for their wrongdoings. That means that, you know, anything that you, you did wrong, he said, okay, well, as long as you understand that you did it wrong, I'll forgive you. That's as easy as it gets, right? Isn't that so easy? Um, God erases our sins because we are his children. Just like everyone that has kids, you 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 um you can get mad at your child, but you're not gonna disown them. You'll be mad for a little while and you'll get over it. You'll still love them the same, you know. All of that stuff will will still be the same. Those are your children, you know. So we are God's children, and therefore He erases our sin because of that. The last word it says salah. That means it's a pause, and that means to um, consider what I say. That's what it's, you know, that word salah means. Consider what I say. We forgive our children, correct? We can be a little bit upset, but we always get over it. That's, a, that's what God does. That's what God promised us, that he will forgive us for our sins, as long as we truly ask for forgiveness. The next verse that we can look at is uh, Hebrews 8, verse 12. Verse 12, it reads, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Okay. So it says, For I will be merciful. The word merciful in this verse is, I'm sorry, one second. The word merciful in this verse is to have pity or to be compassionate. So, to be compassionate is not to be cold or, um, you know, just brush it off. It's to really, like, understand. So, he, it says that God is saying that he will remember no more the wrongdoings that his children do. Iniquities is, an, is, an, is another word that is used here. It says, and their sins and their iniquities. Iniquities is just um, a sin. It's breaking of the law. Oh, lawlessness, I apologize. It's breaking of the law, in, in other words. Um, it says he will be... Okay, God is talking to us, and he is telling us that he will remember no more the wrongdoings that his children do. He says that he will be merciful, which is to have pity and to be a compassionate. So, wouldn't that... I mean, that's how we do. That's how we, we are as people. We're supposed to be. We have to aim to be, you know, compassionate, more, you know, um, with more love. You have to act with more love in your heart. So, you know, just how, how he is saying it in, this, in these verses, that's how we should be in our life. You know, it's just other things to remember, you know, to make our life better. The next verse that we can look at is 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. First John chapter 1 
verse 9, it reads, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He's saying if we, if we were um, to confess, which is to admit that we messed up, that God will forgive us because he's faithful. He won't take back what he already promised us, and that is, you know, to be forgiven from our sins. As long as we truly ask for forgiveness. You know, once again, it's something totally different to just say, oh, I'm so sorry and I won't do it again, and then go right ahead and do the same thing over again. You have to actually, you know, make a commitment to not, to, to pay attention to what you're doing and to actually, you know, make the right move at all times. Once you, once you know that it's wrong, you can't go back to it. You have to move forward, you know, say, no, I can't do this. This is the adversary that's putting this, you know, asking, making me question myself, and I'm going to rebuke it. Knock it off and move forward. He is not, a, God is not an Indian giver. He can't, you know, give us something. He doesn't give us something and then take it back. A lot of people do that also, and that's wrong. Everyone, you know, if somebody were to do that to you, you would feel some type of way. And he is not that person. He is a faithful God. That's what it says in the verse. He is just, which is righteous. And he, it says he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, which is our sins. He forgives us with everything that we do, not just a little bit. He, he doesn't say, oh, well, you know, I could forgive you for coming in late, but I, you know, I can't forgive you for you know, getting that cup of coffee or whatever. I mean, I don't know what a, another excuse, um, another way to put it, but I'm just saying, like, he has, he gives you all. He puts his all into everything. That's how you should do. Uh, the next verse is Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 is verse 7 and it reads let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and our God for he will abundantly pardon now that's a, a powerful statement because you know that's to be wicked is to be wrong, right? So it's saying that if, if a man or a woman, it doesn't, it's, you know, not necessarily just men, but um, in general, man and female, let's say you're living your life wrong, your whole life, but you, you know, you don't know any better, let's just say. And then um, somebody invites you to fellowship and you hear what is what the fellowship is teaching about that specific day and you get hooked and you, you, you come to fellowship and you change your whole life. You know, it's no longer about doing the wrong things, but doing it God's way and doing the right thing. As long as you change your life for real, you know, like truly, God will forgive you. That's awesome. Like, that's the best feeling in the world, you know, that you know that there's, there's um, always room for improvement. There's always a time, you know, there's always... You can always change your life. Like it doesn't matter if you're 90 years old or 25. You, if you, if you see that you're doing something that's wrong and you fix it and you do it God's way and you start living, you know, God's in God's word with God's word as your guide, as your path. God will forgive you, and you will be, you know, He'll forgive you, pardon you, which is to forgive abundantly. That's taking away everything. He takes away everything that you did before and just looks at the positive. That's awesome. So um, another another verse we can look at that pertains to that is uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it reads, 
Hold on. Sorry. Five seven C. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When we are born again, our slate is is wiped clean. You know, we have a new beginning. So you're able to change your life and you're able to renew your mind and be better than you was yesterday. That's what we aim to do. Be better than you were yesterday. And you know, little by little with the word, you'll be better no matter what. Because if you put the, the word first and you put God's, you know, God first, there's nothing else that could top that. You'll be, you know, unstoppable. You'll be the greatest because you'll be on God's team, on God's side, you know. And that's, the, that's what we have to do. Look at this world. This world is, is crazy. And, you know, there's not a lot of people that respect nowadays. There's not, you know, it's hard to forgive. It's hard to move on. But that's because, you know, us as people, as humans, we're making it that way. Because if, if we were to read, if everyone were to, to know about God's word, I, I guarantee you it would be the greatest time here. But obviously, you know, this is this is life and this is, you know, the world. And we can't change we can't change everyone, but we can try our hardest to get people to like see the light, which is the word of God. And you know, to forgive, which is another thing that it says in the Bible to do. To forgive wholeheartedly, truthfully. Not just say it, not just say it, but actually, you know, live by it. Um, let's go to Psalms chapter 32. What time is Psalms 32, I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 2. It says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. So, in the first uh, verse, It said, you know, we should be blessed because we know that our sins are forgiven. It says that those sins are covered. Now, this is the Old Testament. This is Psalms chapter 32. It's the Old Testament. So, in the Old Testament, he was, he was talking about his people, not his children. They were just, you know, his people. And... Because they were his people, he covered them up. We are his children in the New Testament. Uh, after God, I mean, I apologize. After Jesus Christ was resurrected, we became his children, not his just his people. And when we became his children, our our sins were not covered; they were eliminated. You know, there was no more. the same as parenthood here, you know. It's, you know, it's, okay. It's covered, it's not remembered at, at the end of the day. Our sins are not remembered in, in God's book, in God's mind, or whatever you want to, uh, whatever word you want to use to imply, you know, his, his, um, you know, book. I'm going to say book because Everything is written. Okay. So, uh, let's see. The next verse, it says, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth. Imputeth is to not find a trace. So, that's, like, you know, eliminated, another word. So, it says, it's not, in, not iniquity. Iniquity is sin. So, it says, to not find a trace of sin. 
okay and it says and the spirit and in whose spirit there is no guile guile is guilt so your spirit has no guilt so he's looking for the for, for that person you know that those people that that can actually say I did wrong but I, I was forgiven I I, uh, I asked God for forgiveness and I let it go not oh yeah well I did this back in the day and I did that and you know I don't know because God's gonna judge me when I get there you know I hear that a lot so it's it's unfortunate you need to stay away from that and actually forgive yourself too when you make a mistake when you ask for forgiveness you know you, you, you have to not be harsh on yourself it said uh, when you ask for forgiveness you cannot hold guilt after you ask for it because then that defeats the purpose how can you say I'm so sorry for doing this but then continue to doubt your you know that the person forgave you in the, in the beginning that's you know ridiculous it defeats the whole purpose you need to actually you know let it go Let's go to um, Psalms 103. In Psalms 103, verse 12, it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. That's self-explanatory. That's exactly what I'm telling you, that it is eliminated. East and west do not meet. So... We'll never meet our sin again once we ask for forgiveness. He puts it that far away from us that, you know, it's it's not there anymore. Because they will not, you know, it will never come back to you. East and West, they go opposite ways, no matter what. You know, it'll still be going one way and the other one will go the other way. Okay. So I would like to close out in Colossians three, chapter three, verse thirteen. Colossians 3, verse 13. It reads, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You have to remember that it's God in Christ. So God was it was in Jesus when he walked the earth. But when he was re, when Jesus was resurrected, he became Christ. And then it was God in Christ. And God is the one that forgives all. So we are to forgive as Christ forgave us and not hold on to it. It's hard to, you know, to be one way and then have to change to be the other, you know, another or the opposite. But our, our job is to do that. If we are, you know, walking wrong, we need to fix it. We need to walk in the right path. We need to ask for forgiveness and, you know, just live our life the way it's supposed to be. Because you cannot lie to God cannot you know pretend that you're doing something God sees everything God knows it all and the only person that you'll be lying to is yourself so why would you want to do that it doesn't make any sense we are to you know forgive other people the way that that Christ forgave us because it would just be so much easier in our life you know forgiveness is is a big part of of what we are supposed to be doing and we need to just keep on doing it it's hard you know we just have to ask God to show us the way and he will ask God for forgiveness and he'll give it to you what else can I say show others you know it rubs off when you're nice to someone and you know you you're you're God's children you're supposed to be nice to you know, and, and loving. It will rub off to other people. Other people would want to be around you. Other people would, you know, want to ask you for advice. Want to come to see fellowship. 
And that's what we aiming to do, you know. Once again, this world is a crazy world, but it starts with a group of people. It, start, it could start with one person to make a change. So try to do that, okay? And that's all. Thank you. Well, forgiveness, huh? Hey, God has His ways, and you know if we if we endeavor to do His work, His will, His word, um, we're definitely we're definitely going to get to the place where we need to be. Why? Because God called us to this to this one place to be. You know, you and I need to hear um, the teaching tonight. Forgiveness is very important, as you heard. God forgave us through His Son, Jesus Christ. God requested our Heavenly Father to do this. God said, well, there are things that need to be met. And our Lord Jesus Christ met every single thing that God had or that needed to be met in order for you and I to have this forgiveness and be called the children of God today. So you have that responsibility before God as ministers to share these things with other people. Take the scriptures that you get, review them, make them your own, and then share as much as you can. Remember, you don't want to tell somebody something because you think that's the way it is. If you don't know something or you're not sure of it, don't make it up. The word is there, and there are many people that you can go to for information. There's a lot of avenues of information. If you don't know it, then go and seek. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That's God's word. So, um, thank you. Uh, Minerva uh, Silva for allowing us the privilege to hear the word tonight or this afternoon um, on believing or forgiveness and um, I'd like you to take your um, singing in the present truth books uh, sing song books and turn to number 39 there's no two ways about it number 39 Ready? Here we go. There's no two ways about it when you labor for the Lord. His way is the only way none other can you afford. There's a right road or wrong road, which way you're headed for. There's no two ways about it when you labor for the Lord. You must decide or be denied. Don't give your love to him, my heart it be. Go all the way, stand up and say, Don't live my life for the one who died for me. There's no two ways about it when you labor for the Lord. His way is the only way another can you afford. There's a right road or wrong road, which way you're headed for. There's no two ways about it when you labor for the Lord. Well, God bless you. Um, I'd like to pray for the uh, tithe of Brother Sherry. And then we'll also pray for the closing. I'll do everything at one time, and once we finish... Uh, We'll have fellowship among ourselves, and don't leave because I have um, something I want to share with you. Um, so here we go. Heavenly and gracious Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for tonight's abundant sharing. Thank you for your love, your mercy. Thank you for all you've made available to us. In the perfect name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, 
Tonight we have a, a this afternoon actually we're going to do something a little different, uh, which we like to make available to everyone to see. Um, what we like to do is sing happy birthday to our vice president, um, Marcelino Falu Calderon. On Friday he was 96 years old. <laughs> Friday was his birthday, and uh, you know it, he's not that old. I'm only kidding you. Um, but anyway, it was his birthday, and we decided that we want to, you know, just say happy birthday to him, you know, as a fellowship, and people around the world also can join in with us. Um, so if we can just all take a moment and just sing together and sing a happy birthday, okay? So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Falu. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings on Falu. So he just he just blew out the candles. Happy birthday! Um, so um, we're gonna we're gonna just have some cake, and we're gonna just. I'm sorry that I have to move around. I have to move the camera, as you you know, it's not a, a great thing to do because we're gonna put this online. It's gonna you're gonna see that little mess there. But just to let you know, if you go to our website, which I've given everybody, you'll be able to see the the teachings that we put on uh, on the website. Um, there's three right now. There's going to be four with this one. Um, and also there's a new section. It's, it says video, so you can actually go directly to the video and, and watch them. Um, it would help our, our website to move up in line every time that people go in there and see this, the ratings. So it's important for you to turn around and do that. Um, join us in, in helping us build our ministry. Go to the website, you know, view the video so that it can, it can bring us up in ratings. Um, in our website also, there is a section that is um, called teachings. And in there, you're going to see that there's written teachings that you can actually go in for nurture, for ammunition, for, um, for just spiritual growth. Okay, so these things are available. Um, I'd like to once again thank you for joining us here at The Present Truth and giving us the opportunity to serve you. Um, we serve God first. And because God's service is to his people, we are here to serve the people. So if you need us for anything, you know our number, you, it's on the website. Um, you can contact us uh, and, and we can talk, we can figure things out together, we can do whatever needs to be done to move the word over the world. So again, if you have friends, relatives, neighbors, anyone that you think that you want to bless by allowing them to receive the things that you guys receive when you hear the word, have them join us um, here at the, you know, at the at the website, or, or have them go to the website, see it, and if they like it, you can jo have them um, join you in your fellowships to, in live, so that they can be live on with us, and or let me know that you're going to do this, so I can open a line for them, and they will be able from their home to also join us via the website, or oh, not the website, but online. Um, so, again, thank you, God bless you, and have a great day.